Hey guys, you're watching Scoop TV. Thank you for joining us for a brand new season. And you may have a look around you and see that the surroundings are a little bit different. We have a different show for you and it's an exciting one. I have different guests joining us each week to deliver you the latest scoops in entertainment. Plus, we're going to have a crack at giving you a fashion fix. Plus, much, much more to come. I won't waste any more time, however, and introduce my guest for tonight's show. You may remember this gentleman. He is our hater from season one. And you can find this man on Nova 100, Fusey and Kate, every morning, plus on the comedy circuits. Brad Elliott and Ash Williams. Welcome, guys. Thanks. How does it feel to be back, Brad? You know what? This is exciting. We're in a prime time slot. We're like up against 60 minutes and all those other shows that are on the same time on Sunday night, whatever they are. And I reckon we've got a crack at taking out the award of best, most popular show Sunday. I reckon. Yeah. Why not? I reckon we take it. And Ash, how, how are you? Be cool, Brad. Yeah. Be cool. <laughs> uh, I'm really good. Confidence is where we yeah, start. Yeah, I'm really good. Great to be here. Pretty so fired up. You know that this is an entertainment show, so I'm going to ask you, who's your favourite celeb? Look, it's close to my heart. Um, I'll take you back to Australian Idol 01, Cosima DeVito. Um, I get emotional talking about it, but uh, yeah, she came third and had to pull out <laughs> due to throat soreness, but she should have won and she's doing great. So big cheerio to Cosima and um, <laughs> a lot of people still behind you, babe. Cosima. Yeah. Not sure what she's doing at the moment. Singing. <laughs> Jeez. In the shower. No, how dare you. <laughs> Alright, let's get straight into it with our weekly scoops of entertainment. First up, Courtney Stodden kicked off Facebook. Now, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Courtney. She married Doug Hutchinson. He's a star from Lost. Doug is 51. Courtney is 17. You can do the math. And so they made headlines at the beginning of the year when her mother apparently gave them permission to wed and she's been kicked off Facebook. We wonder why. Her content too sexy for Facebook. As you can see in the pic here. Don't know guys, Ow. what do we yeah. think? Ash, you're a Facebook, you're a Facebook user as we all are, but quite excessive and you've got rules and regulations. What do you think of her putting these pics up? Love that picture. Um, you know what, Facebook is actually for, I don't know whether you guys know this, but it's actually designed for girls to put pictures of themselves on the internet in bikinis. That's actually why Facebook was invented. Um, so yeah, I, mean, I, re I respect her and I think uh, Facebook's great. Do you know that shot? If you have a look at that shot, it looks like she's actually hot air ballooning and she's just like about to lift off, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> mm. She's very... She's got massive cans. You've got to respect her. Nah. She's, she's achieved so much <laughs> in her already short life. Brad, what about the mum? I mean, she's given permission for her to marry a 51-year-old. She's 17. What do you think? I think um, the mother, why would she even have let her out of the hospital when she was born? That's, that was, <laughs> that's my question. Let's get right to the point before it all happened. Here, here. Yeah. <laughs> Up next. We're still hearing different things about the marriage or I guess the breakup of the marriage between Ashton and Demi. Sarah Lee, no, not the brand, has confessed to having a one-night stand with Ashton Kutcher in his hotel suite on their sixth wedding anniversary, you dirty dog. She quoted, we had sex twice, everything felt natural, we were having a good time, one thing led to another, he was good but it wasn't weird or perverted or creepy, I was attracted to him, he was attracted to me, he had great endurance, we were, we were up for a while, it was about two hours. The story is still currently unfolding. I, uh, I don't know. I mean, I never really bought the marriage from the beginning. Ash, how would you feel if you had sex with a lady and she described it not as weird or creepy? If he had sex with a lady, that would be interesting anyway. Sure. Um, <laughs> let you go there, mate. I would say that uh, I fooled her because I'm a weird and creepy guy. And if she's like, it wasn't weird or creepy, I'm like, you bloody so, ripper. Brad... The relationship between Demi and Ashton, I guess, I don't know, a bit sketchy? Um, could be. I think the thing that I think Ashton's going through is, remember, he has taken Charlie Sheen's role in Two and a Half Men, and oh, that means you've got to sleep around, get hookers, and put heaps of cocaine up your nose. Yeah, right. And we just went to MA rated. Mm. Harry Potter star 
Next up, arrested over involvement in London riots. Jamie Waylett, who played the Hogwarts bully Vincent Crabbe, has been charged for possessing a petrol bomb during the London rioters. Waylett is accused of violent disorder during clashes in Chalk Farm, which is north of London, and also charged with handling stolen goods. Apparently, also had some <laughs> in the old bedroom. I was smoking dope. You weren't Are sure, you sure what I was it doing. Could there. have been anything. And Waylett appeared in the six of Harry Potter films if you aren't familiar with him, but his character was written out of the final Deathly Harrows film. He was released on bail with a 7 a.m. to a 7 p.m. curfew. I don't know much about this, guys. I'm not a big sci fi, Harry Potter, mm. Twilight, bullshit type of fan. Yeah. What about you guys? Yeah, doing the old BS out there. All right. <laughs> Get to loosen up and start dropping some magic. All right. Yeah, um, well, Ash, if you have magic, why would you use a bomb? Like, yeah. this guy's wasted talent. Because not everyone knows you can do magic. So people disrespect you. So the way to combat that is to walk around with a petrol bomb, you know, let people know that you mean business. You throw it at people. Throw it at people. <laughs> Just let people know oh, you're the man. And if anything happens, use your magic. And, the, and that's it, but the petrol shows that he's not messing about with money. He's a rich guy. Get involved with him. Girls, pick him up. Rich guys, unattractive, but hey, he'll look after you. Don't listen to them. Writing, bombing, bad, bad. Michael Douglas, son, Cameron Douglas, 32, is currently serving five years in prison for dealing cocaine and crystal meth. Good boy. Got his sentence cut in half by testifying against one of his former drug suppliers, which happened to be the Mexican drug cartel. So Michael Douglas could be targeted. I mean, he, the source tells National Enquirer, Michael and wife Catherine could be in great danger. No shit. Since they're out in public, they could be hunted down. This is really heavy stuff. Mm. I mean, it sounds like an episode of Weeds, which I'm addicted to. Ash, you're a fan of Weeds? You're addicted to the weed? We okay. the show, Nancy Butler. Look, uh, this Cameron blog, he's going to have a great time in jail. Jail's great. You can, <laughs> you know. Oh, this get... is really boys' club. Like yeah, is... bombs, tits. Mm. You can. Well, no, it's not. It does feel a little you bit can like fall that. In love in jail. I can't wait for our next segment when we got a bit of <laughs> a bit girl of action. Yeah. yeah, Brad, do you think it was clever for Cameron Douglas to dob in his dad? I mean, he's in the public eye. He's a bit of a stupid douche, isn't he? Well, we haven't seen a movie of Michael's for a long time. Let's face it. And Wall Street. Not... Sorry, mate, but Wall Street. How long ago? A uh, year ago. Was Wall Street. Uh, money never sleeps. Hello. <laughs> Someone's a, a fan? I love Michael Douglas. Well, anyway, I would say he's obviously run out of contracts. Get a reality show. It's going to be called Follow Douglas or Get Him Dug Under. And oh. he could be killed, so... But, um, and our last scoop of the week. Tupac sex tape song to be sold for $1 million. Seriously, God, isn't this guy dead? Tupac filmed a sex tape in 1991. The amateur footage had vision of Tupac rapping whilst receiving sexual favours from a woman. More bloke stuff. Anti-hangover drink company NoHo has offered to pay $1 million for the rights to the unreleased song. You can see the pic here. The figure has been reported to be big enough for Tupac's estate to consider, to consider the offer. Guys, Ash, what do you think about Tupac essentially, or his estate making money off something like this? When will it end? Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm over it too. I don't know what's going on. Seriously, Tupac, um, you know, I like what you do. And you've obviously recorded a lot of stuff before you died. Um, I don't know what's going on, mate. Seriously. Oh, dear. On that note, stick with us because after the break, the fellas and I will be joined by Natasha of Arthur Avenue to give you the fashion fix for this week. Stay with us. I'm really hard in more ways than one. When I finish this, I'm going to put it in your bum. Do you have to do that shh. right now? Hey, shh. Uh, yeah. It's just really distracting. Shh. All right, I'm coming. I'm going to come. Are you going to blow? No, shh. If you come to my place, I'll blow up your face. Yeah, baby, spring, summer, or fall. I'm the guy that will never, ever call. You'll never call me. Yeah, shh. God damn it, bitch. Jesus Christ. I'm going to be laying down some tracks later because i got all the time in the world. Fuck off. You're watching Scoop TV. Thank you for joining us. Welcome back. Now, if you've got something to add, Brad, you know, if you've got something to add, check out our Facebook page. I'm always on it. Yeah, Facebook's not. Facebook.com yeah. forward slash Weekly Scoop. Or if you've got something to tweet, suggestion for a look of the week, 
twitter.com forward slash scoop underscore TV, right at the bottom of the screen. Second up, we've got our fashion fix segment. Us three are obviously not going to be able to have as good a crack at it. We don't well, really know too much, but okay, we have speak someone. For yourself. We have somebody that has an idea what she is talking about. She is a designer, and you also may remember her from this pic. She dressed Miss World competitor Jacinta Campbell in 2010. Please welcome Natasha Dwyer. Thank you for having me. Woo! Okay, Natasha, tell us what, what have you been up to? What have I been up to? I've been delving in the world of high heeled sheepskin booties. Right. Yay. What's up here? So here's oh. a shameless plug. Let's have a look at them because they are gorgeous. Well, this is the exact pair that little Jacinta Campbell wore. Do people want yeah. that these bad boys everywhere? Yeah, well, I'm actually doing mine on an international scale. Clearly, Australia doesn't have much need for winter shoes for yeah. more than three months a year. So maybe Japan, Russia, yeah, yeah the United States. Yeah. And where can yeah. you find those? Well, they're still in the making, but we're wa making them with GLA Australia. So that'll be in the next couple of months. They'll Brilliant. be out. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Can I say, you do, if, with, with this as well, because you've got that, you could, in Russia, it would go well because the hats have oh, got yeah. the... Thing oh, like yeah. that as well, so you could top. Oh, yeah. oh my good goodness! Exactly you are right. Yeah. Have you thought about that? Uh, no, no. Yeah. Do you mind if I use that? You can. You, are you sure? Yes. That's you, right. you don't want to copyright it? No. But just send me some Thank cards. you. <laughs> the look of the week, meeting Gail in this pick was at the Caulfield Cup on the weekend or a few weekends ago. David Jones Marquis, she's in a fuchsia pink pantsuit ensemble. The suit is by Lisa Ho, and the headpiece is by Narita. Both available, of course, at David Jones. Natasha, what are your thoughts? It's pink. It's very pink. It's like lipstick pink with low rider pants. I don't know. She normally gets it spot on and she is so hot, but it's very Not pink. A fan. Next up, Kim Kardashian. Was, she visited the Atlantis Aquarium in Dubai over the weekend wearing this little ensemble. Bright yellow pussy bow blouse and bright green teal skirt. I love the teal. Complemented by nude coloured Louboutins. Kim and her mother Chris are in Dubai promoting the launch of the new millions, millions of milkshake store. Guys, wow. what do we think? I love it. Do you love it? Yeah, I absolutely love it. Oh, I'm indecisive. I guess green and gold always reminds me of Australia. Oh, I know, know it's teal that. and gold, it's but. Yeah, it still reminds me of the Australian running tracksuits, yeah. you know? Kathy Freeman. Yes. I was thinking Kathy Freeman yes. too. Yes, like, like a very curvaceous yeah. Kathy. Can you imagine her bending over curvaceous. running at the start? Of <laughs> she also donned this frock while she was in Dubai. Yes, that is Kimmy K. Now, guys, wow. we saw this in the Sex and City sequel. It's not really kosher. What do, what do we think? Oh, I don't think she should go there. No. I'm into it. <laughs> I mean, you just don't know who's under there. It's so exciting, and you get home, and it's a, it's a surprise. It's a surprise. <laughs> okay, next up, Lady Gaga left her hotel in an oversized leather jacket. I actually thought of an outfit like this as an example of what not to wear for this segment, and she's just donned it this week. It's come out. It's the perfect example of the fugly meets the fugly. It's supposed to be a leather jacket. She was also, she had Louboutin heels as well. She was leaving her downtown hotel in New York City to film her latest music video, Marry the Night. I mean, it's, I mean, have you got anything nice? Yeah, to look, I, I was gonna say, perhaps you all have it all wrong. Maybe she's got the new Gaga garbage line. Yes. Like, why else would you wear it? Perhaps well, she's promoting this. Brad, do you think this is something they could Queen up Australia, that's the new yeah. campaign. New yeah. campaign. That's Get on it. board. Yeah. Lady Gaga yeah. it up. Put oh. your put your gaga in the garbage. Next <laughs> 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 up, Australian androgynous male model. Andre Pedrick has model posting as Marilyn Monroe for fashion magazine Love Cat. You can check it out here. The editorial is entitled Marilyn off duty and Andre channels Marilyn working a signature curls, half and headscarf sunglass combo. The look was styled kind of by, it was by Sex and the City stylist Patricia Field, who oh. she likes a wild look. Stunning, look at those cheekbones. Jeez, it, it, it doesn't he, matter. He, the, well, the thing is, it doesn't matter. Whatever, so beautiful and so gorgeous and no one even knows. You yeah. can see crown. the penis in that photo. It doesn't matter. You can cover that up. You walk and around. And the sausage is going down to it. Yeah. 
Isn't she, that bizarre? I think, um, I, I just think she's a good bloke. <laughs> she is. Imagine it if they did a shot where she was, he was standing over that vent and then the dress goes up and... Oh. That, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> Get Each to their own. Out for the girls. There it is. Andre, if you're watching this, you're fantastic. So a couple of weeks ago, Kmos modelled for the Louis Vuitton Spring Summer Collection. It is a little bit old, but I love her. She, yeah, Spring Summer for Louis Vuitton in a white laser cut feather dress and just looking every inch. Absolutely stunning. The uh, designer Mark Jacobs put together the show. What do we think? Uh, I think Kate's getting a bit mossy. Go get rid of her. I'm really? done. Yeah, yeah, You're I'm, done, I'm done with her. Bring Why? In... What's happened to that? What, what, what's done <laughs> with her? Because she got married? Are well, she like got that? married. Are you like that? Are you she's married? stunning, she's beautiful, she's been there. Let a new one take over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I love her though. You've got to say though, she's maintained her looks. Oh, so yeah. Hard, she? Just, yeah. Oh, she hasn't changed a bit. That's but a... Why did she start like a lingerie line, like Elle McPherson? Yeah, true. You know? Do something different. It's kind yeah. of like um, Daryl. It's like, it's like, <laughs> like Daryl Summers. Like, he hasn't changed. I mean, some, someone new. We need someone new. Yeah. His yeah. looks yeah. old. Billy yeah. uh, Hardcore Dick Daryl. Fashion Stick came off just like Daryl Summers. Fun. And next up, Paylor Swift stepped out for some media duties this week. You can check out her little frock here. It's a little bit matronly, if you ask me. The week dropping by ABC Studios in Times Square, she chatted about winning the Billboard. Magazine Woman of the Year award. Yeah, I, I think it's sweet, it's innocent, but really boring. Yeah, she's got to get some leg out. She's young, she's Spark. vibrant, there needs to be some colour there. I, I feel like there's a, it's really lacklustre. And perhaps maybe a little bit of cleavage. Ooh. But you know, <laughs> that, that, that kind of cutesy look is good for a guy because you go, well, she must be cheeky somewhere else. Yeah. Like, and, and that, you know How what I'm saying. How are you pitching you? her? Don't I, you? I, I, I know what you're saying. It's pretty dirty, mate. Um, no, I'm just being like this cheeky. She, <laughs> might, be, she might be cheeky, nah, like, I know having saying, a bit of fun. She might have a great personality. Totally. I mean, she's yeah. dealt with Joe Jonas, Joe Gyllenhaal. Um, <laughs> who else? But there's heaps. Like, Everyone there's with a J. Like, Anyone with a J, she's on. She's on. So she's going okay. Uh, we thank you so much for joining us for Fashion Fix. And now coming up next, we headed out to Chapel Street in Melbourne this week to see the opening of a store that's too cool for school. Check it out. Thanks to Couturing.com. This is the Subi store opening. <laughs> I like them black girls. I like them white girls. I like them Asian girls. I like them mixed race girls. I like them Spanish girls. Hey guys, Stacey here for Scoop TV and Couturing.com. We are here on a Friday night, Chapel Street in Melbourne, and we're here for the Suvi store opening. And I tell you what, it's attracted the coolest of cool kids. So we're going to head in there and check out what makes Suvi so uber cool. Skinny girls. I like them carrying a little bitty weight girls. the Subi party we're surrounded by lots of cool kids. Are you a cool kid? I like to think I am sometimes yeah <laughs> at a Subi party. If you were to walk past the street in Chapel Street it would be safe to say that lots of people would look in here feeling a tad intimidated. Why do you think that Subi is so affiliated with the cool kid vibe? Um, I just think it's such an iconic Australian brand and it's been it's been a staple kind of denim and you know underground kind of brand it's just consistent every season it's it's just so great to see what they're doing and they're always evolving. It's like high fashion casual. Yeah, definitely, definitely. With kids like us, like this generation definitely, this is where Subi fits in. Like just, you know, the cool kind of like the indie and the kind of like the grunge and the rock and roll. So that's definitely Subi. Um, and you can tell because like look at the way that the whole shop's kind of like presented and, and the crowd. You can tell that this is definitely, you know, where Subi is, where Subi belongs. I'm here with Dan Single, one of the founders of Subi. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Now, this is a good, good turnout. Yeah, it is. Not our hometown, but uh, I'm happy with it so far. There's lots of, lots of cool kids in Melbourne, that's for sure. Yeah, Melbourne is cool. Yeah, I think that, I don't know, maybe it's just speak real to cool kids, because it's kind of what they like, you know? No bullshit, it's just like us making clothes for our friends and it's pretty transparent, you know? people can see what it is. That I can help but play around for sure. I did it before. Tell us how would you describe 
describe Jimmy in three words? Too fucking amazing. Cool and hot. Underground, cool and very, very consistent. Describe Jimmy in three, go three words, guys. Very, very good. Colourful, like cutting edge. Fashionable on maybe ahead of fashion. I don't know. Five. Best warehouse sales. I use my three. I have four, man. Great warehouse sales. Crazy motherfucker. <laughs> You're gonna have to bleep that out. <laughs> Can you get any cooler than a beanbag in the middle of Chapel Street? So we've been at the Scoopy party. I think I'm a little bit cooler for even attending. This is Scoop TV and Couturing.com. Thanks for joining us. Welcome back. You're watching Scoop TV on almost the end of a quite a successful first episode back, guys. Yes, what do you think? Well summed up, quite as successful. I wouldn't go as far to say successful, yeah. quite as successful. I don't know if you'll be invited back. Yeah. It's humble, it's smart, it's smart. Mm. All right, well before we go, we do have one last segment for you. We've gone high and low to find you our favourite celebrity tweets. This is Celeb Tweety Tweet. Shane Warne tweeted, new gym built in house and is great. Push ups, bench press and some beach curls early this morning. Yes, jet lag. Time for a bacon roll. Inspiring stuff Shane, I love Twitter. And Oprah tweeted, lots of people want to ride in the limo with you but what you want is someone who will take the bus with you when the limo breaks down. Hey, thank you Oprah. If I could make frequent dire points for all the times I've died, I could buy a house with my points. Ruby Rose tweeted. Is she dead? That almost brings our show to a full completion until, of course, our YouTube clip of the week. Beyonce's in the headlines again with her baby bump. Check this clip out. Beyonce Beyonce上周日在MTV颁奖典礼上表现亮眼 Jay-Z会想让孩子跟他一起饶舌吗? 还是碧昂斯会想让孩子跟随他的舞步呢? 不管他们如何决定, 有件事是确定的。就是这孩子注定钱多到花不完。that's it from us this week. Thanks so much for joining us in our first episode of Scoop TV for season two. I'd like to give a big thank you to Brad and Ash for joining us and helping me deliver you all the scoops in entertainment. You can join us next week, every Sunday night, 9.30 right here on channel 31. I'm Stacey June and have yourself a bloody fabulous week.